Good evening, boys and girls. Tonight's lesson is lesson 6.6, .6, Compare Fractions Using Benchmarks. We are going to be working on page 123, and here's your essential question for tonight. How can you use benchmarks to compare fractions? Now, we're going to look at a story problem. This problem is not in your Go Math book, but we're going to watch and listen. It reads, Zach made a popcorn snack. He mixed five eighth gallon of popcorn with one half gallon of dried apple rings. Did he use more dried apple rings or more popcorn? So we want to look at one half and we want to look at five eighths and we want to see which did he use more of, one half or five eighths. Now we have a problem. The two and the eight as our denominators are different, so it's not as easy to compare. We're going to use a model to compare one half to five eighths. Now, here I have fraction bars representing the equal parts in the fractions. So, here I have my two parts, and this is for my dried apple rings, and here I have for my five eighths, I cut my fraction bar into eighths for my popcorn mix. Now, I'm going to shade how much dried apple rings Zach used. Well, he used one half. So that's one part out of two parts he used for the dried apple rings. Now, I'm going to shade in my five eighths. So here's one eighths, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. Now notice that four eighths is equal to one half, but Zach used five eighths of the popcorn. So we need to shade in one more of these one eighth strips. So now I can see that Zach used more popcorn than dried apple rings because 5 eighths is greater than 1 half. 1 half is equal to 4 eighths, but he used 1 more eighth, which is 5 eighths. So 1 half is less than 5 eighths. And Zach used more popcorn mix than the dried apple rings. Now, boys and girls, what if I wanted to compare one half and five eighths without using a model? Well, I'm going to look and notice that I have different denominators for one half and five eighths. It would be easier for me if I can compare one half out of eighths. So if I have the fractions one half and I have five eighths, I'm going to look at my one half and I'm going to think if I have a fraction that's equal to, to one half that is out of eighths, then I can compare it to my five eighths. Well, what is one half of eight? That's right, four is one half of eight. So four eighths equals one half. Now, since four eighths equals one half, I can compare my four eighths to five eighths. Now, I can clearly see, since my denominators are the same, I can compare them easy, easier. So four eighths and five eighths, I can see that four eighths is less than five eighths because four is less than five. Now, since four eighths is equal to one half, one half is less than five eighths. So In this lesson, we are going to use benchmarks to compare fractions. A benchmark is a known size or amount that helps you understand a different size or amount. You can use the one-half benchmark to help you compare 
fractions. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at zero, and we're going to be looking at one half and one whole because we know these easily. We can understand what they are, and they're going to help us compare fractions. Okay, boys and girls, let's look at number two in your Go Math book on page 123. They want us to compare four twelfths and four sixths. Well, I notice that I have different denominators, so it's not as easy to compare these fractions. I'm going to use my benchmarks and a number line to help me compare these fractions. Now, I'm going to look at my first fraction, which is 4 twelfths, and I'm going to use my benchmarks to compare this fraction. Now, I used a number line and I cut it into 12 parts. 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, 5 twelfths, 6 twelfths would be where my half would be. So this would be 6 twelfths. Also because 6 is half of 12. 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths, 10 twelfths, 11 twelfths, and 12 twelfths which would be equal to one whole. Now I'm going to place my 4 twelfths on the number line. Now since I know that this is 6 twelfths here, I know that 4 twelfths will be right here. Now I'm seeing that 4 twelfths is less than 6 twelfths, which is a half. So 4 twelfths is less than a half. Now I'm going to look at my second fraction, which is 4 sixths. I drew a number line that is cut into six equal parts. 1 sixth, 2 sixth, 3 sixth, which is where my half mark is because 3 is half of 6. 4 sixth, 5 sixth, and 6 sixth, which is equal to a whole. Now I'm going to place my 4 sixth on the number line. 4 sixth is 1 greater than 3 sixth. So now I can see that 4 sixth is greater than one half. Now, if I look at both of my fractions that I'm trying to compare, four twelfths is less than one half, and four sixths is greater than one half. So I can compare these fractions by saying that four twelfths is less than four sixths because. 4 twelfths is less than 1 half, and 4 sixths is greater than 1 half. Okay, let's look at number 3 in your Go Math book. We have 2 eighths and 1 half. We need to compare 2 eighths to 1 half. Well, I'm going to think of my fractions and compare them to one half. Well, I already have one half here, so really I just need to compare my two eighths to a half, which is this fraction here. So I need to think, out of eighths, how does two eighths compare to a half? Well, if I have two eighths, and I have the denominator of eight, what would be one half of eight? Well, 4 eighths is 1 half of 8. So 4 eighths equals 1 half. So now that we have our 2 eighths and our 1 half, which is 4 eighths, we can compare the 2 eighths to 1 half. Now I have 2 and 4 as my numerators. So I'm going to think 2 is less than 4 eighths. 2 eighths is less than 4 eighths, and since 4 eighths is equal to 1 half, 2 eighths is less than 1 half, because 1 half is equal to 4 eighths. Okay, boys and girls, let's look at number 4 in your Go Math book. We have 3 fifths, and we have 3 thirds. Now, I'm going to use a number line to look at these two fractions. Now, boys and girls, I'm going to look at both of my fractions. I have 3 fifths 
and 3 thirds. And I'm going to see which one of these fractions could I compare to our benchmarks of 0, 1 half, and 1 whole. Well, right away, do you notice that 3 thirds, 3 thirds is equal to 1 whole? Whole. So if I were to put 3 thirds on a number line, 3 thirds would be here, which would be at one whole. Now my number line is cut into fifths. One fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and five fifths would be also equal to a whole. But I can see that I only have three fifths. So 3 fifths would be right here. This would be 3 fifths compared to 1 whole, which would be 5 fifths. Now I'm seeing that 3 thirds is equal to a whole also. So my 3 fifths does not equal a whole. It's less than a whole. So I can say that 3 fifths is less than 3 thirds because 3 fifths is less than 1 whole. Let's look at number 5 in your Go Math book. We have 7 eighths and 5 tenths, and we need to compare these two fractions. Now, I'm going to compare these two fractions to my benchmarks. So if I have my number line here, and I have my zero mark, my half mark, and my one whole mark. Now I'm going to look at both fractions and I want to compare them to one half. Now if I look at my seven eighths, out of eighths, what would be equal to a half? Well, four eighths is equal to one half. So in this section, I would put my four eighths on my number line here. Now, I'm going to look at my second fraction, which is 5 tenths. Now, I'm going to think, what would be the half mark for 5 tenths? Well, what is half of 10? 5 is half of 10. So 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. So here is where my 5 tenths would go. And my 4 eighths is down here. Now 4 eighths is equal to 1 half. Now if I compare 5, oh, I'm sorry, 4 eighths and 7 eighths, I know that 7 eighths is greater than 4 eighths. So 7 eighths would be greater than 1 half. So I would say that my 7 eighths would be here close to the whole mark because 8 eighths is equal to 1 whole. So now if I look at both of my fractions, my 5 tenths and my 7 eighths, who is larger? My 7 eighths is larger to 5 tenths and 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. So 7 eighths is the greater fraction. So 7 eighths is greater than 5 tenths because 7 eighths is greater than 1 half. Okay, boys and girls, let's jump down to number 16. It says Erica ran 3 eighth mile and Maria ran 3 fourth mile. Who ran farther? So I want to know which one of these fractions is larger. Now, I'm going to use a number line and my benchmarks to help me solve this problem. Now, I have two number lines, and one of my number lines is cut into eighths because one of my fractions is three eighths, and the other number line is cut into fourths because my other fraction is three fourths. So, now I want to compare three eighths to a half. Well, I know that out of eighths, four eighths is equal to a half. Now, if I'm looking at three eighths and four eighths, I know that 
3 eighths will be right here and it is less than 1 half. Now let's look at our second number line that's cut into fourths and we're going to compare our 3 fourths to a half. Now I know that a half of 4 parts is 2 parts. So 2 fourths is equal to a half. Now my fraction is 3 fourths. If I count 1, 2, 3 out of 4 parts, this would be where my 3 fourths would be. Now, if I look at both fractions, 3 fourths is greater than 1 half, and 3 eighths is less than 1 half. So if I'm comparing 3 eighths and 3 fourths, I know that 3 fourths is greater than 3 eighths. So Maria ran farther. Okay, boys and girls, your homework is on page 124. Make sure that you are doing numbers 1 and 2 only, and make sure that you assess yourself at the bottom of the page. Have a good evening, and we will see you tomorrow in class. Bye.